Um, okay, so I'll try to move fairly quickly through this since we're a little bit behind schedule. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the project uh, and the requirements that uh, Scanner and Barry um, have worked together to meet and uh, some of the future directions. And, the, and I will demonstrate um, the sample management process that integrates the uh, trust network into our, uh, into our survey in our survey data collection. So um, the Barry trial is um, a multi-site cluster randomized trial. There's 46 uh, clinics, four EHR vendors, and five different clinical organizations. And the project is a, a incorporation of the principles of behavioral economics into the design of uh, clinical decision support and performance feedback. And the um, near real-time feedback of the comparative performance measures requires uh, continuous data integration and analysis. Um, so uh, we have to have a standardized extract and transformation programs. Uh, mm. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, um, in the sample management process, we have to identify the right cohort of subjects. In this, in this example, this differs from the uh, typical case that we've seen so far in that our subjects are actually providers, they're not patients. They're randomized into groups prospectively, and we have to uh, enroll, the, enroll the providers into the trial and track them over time. And uh, we need to integrate the full data set for the uh, outcome analysis of the overall trial. Um, so I'm just going to skip through this and say that this is our original uh, architectural plan, which um, centers around the study, and uh, in the the study uh, handles the design and um, the study protocol, the specification of the analytic data set, the data integration process, the data analysis, and the reporting. Uh, I imagine that there would be a single distributed data request, and each one of the uh, data warehouses at our sites would have a virtual machine like the scanner virtual machines that we've uh, seen in prior slides, and we would receive our research data sets uh, at, the, um, at the central node again for analysis. What happened in reality is that several of our sites had a fair amount of uh, differences in the way that they would like to implement the system. So one in particular uh, had a really hard time implementing their data use agreement and so we have to um, execute the analysis locally rather than doing it uh, centrally for, for, this, for this site. Also, two of the sites um, have organizational policies that would not allow us to install virtual machines on their networks. So we had to uh, uh, develop a way to have local execution of the um, extract and load programs. And the rest of our sites, mostly the community clinics, didn't have strong policies around data sharing um, or uh, in one case around uh, really data storage. So it's a lot easier to work with them on the one hand, although it required a lot more investment and development on uh, the creation of data warehouses for research. Um, so the way that Scanner has actually helped us put a system together that will actually combine these local and uh, distributed approaches is in the site, in the site that uh, wasn't able to finish their DUA in time, they're actually exporting the results of their analysis and the uh, extract transform and analysis programs are all generated through, uh, let's see if I can, through the notion of a, a sort of centralized uh, code and query generator. So that means that the analysis, the analysis programs can still be standardized and the transformations are using a common data model um, allow us to think of, develop the analysis programs on the same, on the same extract. Um, it also uh, has the possibility of generating a human readable data use agreement, and that simplifies uh, that simplifies the process so that the programmers are re actually reading code and the uh, and the administrators and decision makers are uh, reading something that reading something that is in uh, 
the language, the language that they're expecting in terms of cohort definitions. Uh, for, the, for the sites where we had to do the local extracts, they export a data set using the same extract program. And uh, for, the, for the sites that uh, were, were actually able to use our original model, they, they have installed a virtual machine and are exporting data back to us. So the services that we're using um, have code, code generation that creates extracts and transformation programs for each source. The analysis programs are published and maintained by the study personnel, and they operate on the same data model. And the uh, data transfer and publishing steps are then performed at the site's discretion. The recruiting, <laughs> you can help me <laughs> bring up the, so, there, so the subject recruiting is securely managed with an authenticated process, and that's what I'm going to demonstrate. Okay, so, see. so this is, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. So this is uh, an example of a screen that would, that would uh, catalog various studies. Uh, the study that um, we're interested in right now is this, uh, this first one. Um, the, uh, the, funding, the funding agency and the design are recorded here and the status uh, are, is indicated. And so you can take the action of uh, recruiting subjects over the network here and just a little bit of information about the, about the study itself, uh, linked to the protocol on clinicaltrials.gov and uh, information about the design of the study and the study arms. And uh, I have a... Uh, Expressed, uh, expressed the cluster variables and the eligibility requirements for participation in the study in, um, in the common data model, which we were using as an extended version of OMOP. And uh, now in, in, this, in this case, we can, we can also uh, allow for different stratification at the time of randomization. So, um, and for the purposes of a demonstration, uh, all of the potential subjects are, um, are linked to my email. <laughs> So this is uh, this is now sending an email to um, the. I think I just ripped the microphone off of its stand. This is now sending an email uh, through that it, through the trust network with authentication parameters to the to the subject in this case me and. Hopefully I haven't received any embarrassing emails. <laughs> So this is a message to the provider that was generated through the network that shows um, how the subject can log in and uh, what they need to know to authenticate. So in, in this case, they're provided a link to the, to the login, and uh, their uh, password is based on information that they can verify through the data in the data network, which is the street name of the last clinic that they had. So. So now, now this is actually executing the um, the trust service that that we developed um, in combination with uh, Mitch Muth and um, David at Resilient, and so. After after entering the password, um, I see that there's an error in the URL, so I'm going to. Let's see if I can. Oh, I see what the issue is. Um, okay, so this is uh, my my fault with the. 
copy and paste. I apologize. Send another email. So I think that uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna skip to the the what would what would happen um, after the authentication is that the um, is that the survey would advance directly to the survey which has been customized for a particular participant and um, this is what's happening over the network and I think I the problem the problem that we ran into was because there's a cookie that's been set after I failed my first login. Um, so uh, just as an overview, and I'm going to ask David to jump in if I butcher any of this, because this is, uh, this, I didn't have a lot of participation in developing this. Um, the, the, trust, the trust network sitting at the top of this uh, screen um, shows the application services, the, trust, uh, the authorization services, and other services that can be, can be used. We're, uh, we're using the authorization services here. And, um, the first, the first step is uh, emailing the the subject, uh, setting uh, after we've set up a service uh, that tells us what the credentials are that we want to that we want to enforce. Um, the first step is emailing the subject. The second step is enforcing the credentials. Third is validating, and uh, finally, the subject can then fill out a survey that will then merge uh, back with our data in the database. So. Um, the, so the, the authentication trust service is actually locally on uh, on our uh, study node uh, with the with the access server, and the information that governs the authentication is in the database uh, that we have uh, collected from our um, our network, which is not really shown here in this diagram. And Mimic is the survey system that is uh, is used here, integrating with the. Network and the sample management service uh, attaches attaches to the main database, and ultimately the data will be merged between uh, Mimic and the uh, other network components. Um, and so, um, I just want to say, in the in the future, we have several other additional things that we uh, intend to do to integrate the different services that Scanner has uh, helped develop. Uh, one one is a full transition to the use of the mediator in the common query model. Another is the uh, use of the um, adverse event surveillance methods so that we can uh, re report to our data safety monitoring board using the same kind of uh, detection methods that Michael just described. And also, uh, we have other ongoing studies. Uh, one of them is a MTM study that is similar to what you're going to hear about from Grace. And then a behavioral economics diabetes study that is also a multi-site study with uh, Geisinger Health Systems, um, several sites, several several uh, sites that are in, involved in a Type One Diabetes Network, including UCSD. So we hope that we'll be able to also take advantage of scanner utilities in that case. And I think that that's all that I have. Any questions? I'm, I'm not, this is Devin McGraw, I'm not a researcher, so I'm unaware of the degree to which sort of rigorous identity and authentication protocols are typically used in, in the administration of surveys. Um, are they often used? I mean, this is, it's a pretty rigorous model, so from a privacy and confidentiality standpoint, it's, um, you know, you would rate it highly, but I wonder when you're talking about responses to survey data, how important it is to get that right. Right. So, in in this case, one of the one of the reasons that it's important here is because uh, the providers uh, are going to be linked with their clinical data over the network. So we have to make sure that their okay. identities are closely managed. Um, okay. In in other surveys, another thing that uh, that is often done is linking identities with things like uh, social security information. So, for um, one of the diabetes studies that we have. We're linking uh, patient identities, their EHR data, 
with their Social Security Administration data in order to uh, analyze productivity as an outcome. And that actually requires shipping data uh, with with uh, identifiers to the Social Security Administration. So that's another case oh, where yeah. you... Oh, no, yeah. No, no, no. Absolutely. I think I was just looking at sort of the simple submission of a survey and wondering why we needed such an elegant solution. But the link to the clinical data, clearly. Yeah. yeah. Sorry for not making that clear. <laughs> Okay, we're back on schedule, so 15-minute break, and then we'll reconvene at 10.15. Thank you. <laughs>